I've got a nice problem for you guys today. So in particular, we're gonna show that the cosine of 20 degrees is irrational. And let's notice that 20 times three equals 60, and the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to one half. So that fact tells us that we might wanna derive some sort of triple angle formula to write the cosine of 20 degrees in terms of the cosine of 60 degrees. And that'll be exactly our first tool that we'll use here, is this, like I said, triple angle formula. And we're also gonna use something about the rational roots to a polynomial. And I thought to make this video kind of self-contained, we would prove both of these tools. So let's start with this triple angle formula. And we're gonna derive this one of my favorite ways, and that's by using complex numbers and Euler's formula. So let's first notice that cosine of three theta is the same thing as the real part of the cosine of three theta plus i times the sine of three theta. That's because we just added a pure imaginary number to this cosine of three theta and then took the real part, so we didn't add anything really. Okay, but now we can use, like I said, Euler's formula to take this combination of cosine and i sine and write it as a complex exponential. So this is now the real part of e to the i times three theta by using Euler's formula. But now we can use exponent rules to take this and write it as the real part of e to the i theta cubed. Then we can expand this e to the i theta using Euler's formula once again, we get the real part of cosine theta plus i times sine of theta, all of that cubed. But now we need to multiply that binomial out. So let's see what we get for that. We'll have the real part of cosine cubed theta, and then we'll have three cosine squared i sine theta. So that'll be plus three i cos squared theta sine theta. And then we'll have cosine theta times i sine all squared times three again. So this is just from the binomial formula. So that's gonna give us minus three times cosine theta times sine squared theta. And then we'll have i times sine theta, all of that squared. So that gives us minus i times sine cubed theta. Now we need to extract the real part. So notice that will involve this cosine cubed theta and then this three cosine theta times sine squared theta. But maybe while we do that, let's take this sine squared theta and rewrite it using the Pythagorean identity as one minus cosine squared theta. So that's gonna leave us with the cosine of cubed theta or cosine cubed theta and then it'll be plus three times the cosine cubed theta from this negative three times this negative one. And then finally, minus three times the cosine theta from this minus three times this one. But now putting all of that together, we see that we have derived this triple angle formula. Now we're gonna prove something called the rational root theorem. So that says if we have a rational root of a polynomial, so this is an nth degree polynomial, I've written the leading term and the constant term, capital A times X to the N plus all of the middle terms plus capital B equals zero, then that rational number is of the form B over A where B, the numerator, divides this constant term and A, the denominator, divides this leading term. So let's maybe suppose that we have b over a, and that's a root of this polynomial. And we might as well assume that these are relatively prime, so the GCD is one. And now we'd like to get to this condition down here. Okay, so let's see how we could do that. So the fact that b over a is a root of this thing, that tells us that capital A times b to the n over a to the n plus something, maybe I'll just put box, times b to the n minus one over a to the n minus one, plus all the way down something, which I'll call just box, times b over a plus capital B equals zero. 
I guess I should point out here that this is a polynomial with integer coefficients. That's pretty important. I didn't write that over here, but we'll just say it verbally. This is a polynomial with integer coefficients. That's in the undercurrent here since we're talking about divisibility though. Okay, so we've got something like that. So notice it doesn't really matter what these coefficients are right here um, in terms of our condition that we're getting in the end. Okay, so anyway, now we're going to maybe move the b to the other side of the equation and then clear denominators so we have an integer equation. So that's going to give us a times b to the n plus something times little a times b to the n minus 1 plus all the way down to, let's see, this is going to be that something times a to the n minus 1 times b equals, so we'll have negative b times a to the n minus 1. So we have something like that. But now let's notice something real quick. So let's notice that the left-hand side of this equation is a multiple of little b. So that's pretty clear. We can factor out a little b from this. But that tells us that b must divide the right-hand side of this equation. But that means that b divides b times a to the n minus 1. But then, since the GCD of A and B is equal to 1, that means that little b must divide big B. And that's our first condition over here. Now, how might we get that second condition? Well, we'll do the same kind of thing that we did before, but we'll take this equation and we will solve for our A term. So let's notice if we do that, we get a times b to the n equals little a times a bunch of stuff. I won't even be like super careful about that because if we move all of this from the left-hand side of the equation to the right-hand side of the equation, we have a multiple of a. But now we look at this thing right here and we see that the right-hand side of this equation is a multiple of a, but then by our same logic here, that means a divides the left-hand side of the equation, but since our GCD is one, a must divide the number capital A. So that's our second condition over here. So putting this all together, we see that possible rational roots of our polynomial are of the form b over a, I guess I should maybe put plus minus b over a, where b are factors of capital B and a are the factors of capital A. So that means it's pretty easy to just write down a list of the possible rational roots for a polynomial. Okay, so now we've got this tool taken care of and we're ready to write down our solution. Now we're ready to finish this thing off since we've got these tools built. So like I said, we're gonna show that the cosine of 20 degrees is irrational, and we're gonna use the following fact like we talked about originally, which is the cosine of 60 degrees, which is equal to obviously the cosine of three times 20 degrees is equal to one half. Okay, so now let's introduce some notation. So let's set x equal to the cosine of 20 degrees. So, and then we'll notice that means we have one half equals the cosine of 60 degrees, which equals by our triple angle formula, four times the cosine squared of 20 degrees minus three times the cosine of 20 degrees. But then using our variable substitution here, that's going to be equal to four X cubed. That should be and then minus three times x. So that means that we have, in the end, eight x cubed uh, minus six x minus one equals zero. So in other words, cosine of 20 degrees is a root of this polynomial. So that means the possible rational values of the roots of this polynomial by this thing over here are going to be the factors of one divided by the factors of eight, well, plus minus each of those. So let's write that down. So the possible roots are gonna be plus minus one, plus minus half, plus minus 
quarter, and finally plus minus eighth. And that's it, again, by our rational root theorem. And now let's introduce a little bit of notation so we can check this quickly. Let's call this P of X. And then it's just a matter of checking each of these roots. So let's note that P of one is the same thing as eight minus six minus one, so that's one. So that's clearly not equal to zero. P of negative one will be negative eight minus negative six minus negative one, so that's gonna be negative three. So that means negative one is also not a root. So we have plus or minus one are not roots. And then, well, it's really just a calculation. So P of one half, so you can calculate this out. And this is actually also negative three. That's clearly not equal to zero. And then similarly, P of negative one half ends up being the number one. That's also clearly not equal to zero. That means that plus minus half are also not roots. And then you can check, and I won't do that here because this is just arithmetic, you can check that those are also not roots. So what have we done? Well, via these tools over here, we've shown that the only possible rational values of the cosine of 20 come from this list. And then a combination of what we've done on the board and what I've asked you to check, checks that none of those actually work. And thus, if none of the possible possibilities work, then this must be an irrational number. And if you like this video, maybe think about subscribing. And also, I've done some other videos on the channel where we check irrationality of some numbers. One should be on the screen right now if you'd like to check that out. And that's a good place to stop.